I'm looking over at Harry Golden and Chuck Pisano. I don't know what it could have been. And a re-rack here on lane 22 for Jimmy Johnson, up by 11. Firestone turning the champions, 11 in a row in the solid 10 pin. Could have been a 300 game on national television. Can his son do it? He's got the first six. That tells the story. championship match you start with six in a row it's hard to do better than that remember this has been the only difficult spare the players have faced all week the middle of the lane is unpredictable the ball either skids by or hooks more than they expect so he has to be careful And you heard him say it. I'm sure you could hear that at home. He said, hook. He expected the ball to move a little more. It was in the oil. There's a lot of oil in the middle of the lane, and it just skidded. Even the sanded urethanes, the balls that are made to hook, if there's a lot of oil, they'll react to that surface. That's the problem area down the middle. There's a good look at it. And watch the ball. It never turns. It just keeps rotating and sliding. It's like a tire on ice. go down. A little more direct with that shot. He didn't give it quite as much room as he has in the past on his other shots that came back and finished a little harder. Again, if you arc the ball back, you get it out to the right a little bit. It hits the drier boards, creates more back end. That one he kept in the oil, and he didn't get the carry. The ball didn't hit quite as hard as he wanted it to. This is an unusual way to shoot the quarter pin. He's going right down the left side. Normally he'll shoot that cross lane. He went down the left side, and he has his reasons, but that's not the way to do it, folks. Mark down Saturday, the 8th of December, on your calendar. NBC Sports World presents the coverage of the third bowling shootout, that unique event featuring frame-by-frame -frame competition, prize money escalating start to finish, defending champion Marshall Holman, plus Brian Voss and Lisa Wagner, along with an amateur, winner of a nationwide competition. $150,000 in prize money, the bowling shootout. Caesars on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Hope you'll join us December 8th at 4 Eastern. And he had the 4-9 standing earlier in the fifth, uh, excuse me, in the sixth frame on that lane, and he almost did it again, back to back. Good break. Left the nine and the six, the seven and the seventh, the four here in the eighth. Still anybody's match. Right at it, as you can see. He's not playing the ball to hook. That's that oil. He wants to make sure he goes right at it. Johnson is leading by half a dozen. And as well as he has played to this point, only a six pin lead because of that mistake he made in the seventh frame, now bowling in the eighth. bothers him. He came right back off that mistake. He made a great shot when he had to. He's right back in control of the match on a strike in the eighth frame, and we're going to get another look at that shot. The talent of Jimmy Johnson. You can see it. he's looking at the score. He's trying to figure out exactly where he stands. For 21 years of age, his concentration level remarkable here in this championship match. And here again, there's always key shots, and this is the one he wants, the ninth frame. The 
nine. Solid nine. The solid nine, and again, remember earlier, the solid eights we've seen, things of that nature, and the ballers. The bowlers are getting so much on the bowling ball, Jay. They're making it hit so hard. The pins are out. You see how quickly those pins were gone? There were just nine pins disappeared, and it's almost like that solid nine grew out of the deck. And the disappointment, of course, for Jimmy Johnson. Robert Lawrence down by six. And this again, I'll say it one more time, is a very cool young man. Looking for his third PBA title. This young man looking for his first. where we stand at this point. Robert Lawrence is in the driver's seat. Even though he is down by six pins, he has a possi possibility of 247 if he should get the strikes in the 10th, 11th, and 12th. But on the on other hand, Jimmy Johnson on a spare, the maximum he can get is 243. So the fate of the match is in the leader's hands. Robert Lawrence, our tournament leader, finishing first. And remember, he made the decision to finish first to put the pressure on the, on the rookie Jimmy Johnson. This is a must strike to take the lead. Lawrence struck out in Peoria to win. Trouble. Major yes, mistake. Sir. And he knows it. You can see by his reaction that the ball came off his hand early. He set it short. When you do that, it always hooks early. And here, watch the ball. Picks up the rotation early there through the middle of the head pin. And not an easy spare. He must make this spare to force Jimmy Johnson to mark in the 10th frame to win the tournament. They're in line for him down there, the 3 6 10. And there's his reaction after that last shot. And here we go. Good shot. He's shaking his head, though. Well, he needed that first strike to take the lead, and actually a double in the tenth and good count would have won the tournament for him. Now he's opened it up. Jimmy Johnson only needing a mark in the tenth frame and good count to win his first tournament, first time on national television. score is 2-27. Well, this is the most important toss of this young man's career. And he'll rev it up. You'll see plenty on this one. a look at it. His first championship, first time on national television. He's picking right up where father left off, Hall of Famer Don Johnson. And the pins spin and dance. The New Brunswick's doing the job. And of course, that tremendous rotation and the reaction of Jimmy. Another one. <laughs> look at this young man. His dad has got to be proud. I'm sure of that. Oh, I'm sure. Remember, Don Johnson won the first two from Brunswick Memorial World Open that were ever held, and Harry's sons picking up that heritage. What a great, great feeling it is for this young man and his father, I'm sure. He is the first rookie to win on tour since John Odropniak did it in 88. What a Brunswick Memorial World Open we've had. 21-year-old Jimmy Johnson of Columbus, Ohio is the champ. Now, at a pro shop near you, Brunswick is delivering a 100%.
urethane monster. We're delivering the power of a rhino. The hardest charging ball in America. Five distinct formulations. Brunswick's Rhino reigns. Uh, janitor, do the pro shop, please. Times roll with the clean, fresh taste of Bud Light. Hey! It won't fill you up, never lets you down. Hey! The 1991 Toyota Previa All-Track LE was designed for precious cargo. No one knows that better than golf star Chichi Rodriguez, who uses the Previa to bring disadvantaged kids to his youth foundation for a little care and guidance. Nothing is more precious than to see a smile on a little boy's or girl's face. To me, that's more important than winning any golf tournament. Toyota Previa. We love what you do with it, Chi-Chi. KC. San Diego. Thunder and lightning. Sunday. NBC Sports coverage of the PBA Fall Tour has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. By your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. And by Brunswick, proud sponsor of Team USA. Florjanic and Ernie Vogel presenting the check and the trophy. The rookie, Jimmy Johnson, has won the Brunswick World Open. Coming up next, the running Rebels of UNLV, ranked number one, go up against the Soviet squad. That's live, except on the West Coast. Basketball next. Pearl Anthony, Jay Randolph, so long. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports and the PBA Incorporated in association with NBC Sports.